I'm going to start you guys off with an exercise, all right? So if you were looking at this chart right now in front of you, all right, what would you do? How many people would look at this chart and say, I am ready to stop buying this stock and expect it to go higher, meaning that you expect it to go long, okay? And how many of you guys are saying, nope, this stock is not going up. It's going to continue going down. I am going to short this stock. So please go ahead and um, you know, type in your responses. Uh, I'd like to see what you guys have in there. Okay. So uh, a, lot, a lot of people saying buying, buying, buying. One person said not enough information. Very good. One person said short. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for that. All right. So let's do this. For all of you guys who said you were going long, let's see if you're right. Okay. Well, the next day you guys are doing fine. All right. And then how about now? How many people still wanted to stay into this trade? Okay. All right. How many people are, start, uh, are beginning to want to stop buying? How many people are trying to get out of their positions and sell everything they have? All right. The reason why I ask you guys these questions is because this is exactly what I have to deal with every single day, all right? And this is, this is what you have to deal with because we don't know what is going to happen on the, next, on the next candle, which is on the right side of the chart. So how do we anticipate seeing what is going to happen and being able to take advantage of it, positioning ourselves in a position where we can take advantage of this? So for those of you guys who are long, are you still staying long? For those of you guys who are short, are you happy now? Okay. What about now? Who's still deciding to stay in and who's deciding not to stay out? But the interesting question is, why? Why do you feel like you should stay in? Why do you feel like you should stay out? If you have the answer to that, that's great, okay? But if you don't have the answer to that, then you absolutely should really, really, really learn how to trade and understand what is going on by looking at the chart before you do anything, okay? So those people who were going long, Who's still waiting to stay in long? Okay. Now, we still have this going on. All right. At this point in time, some of you guys are just all confused and saying, I don't even know what's going to happen anymore. Okay. Uh, some people are still holding on to their short position. Some people are still like, okay, I'm going to buy more. Some people are like, I'm out. What are you going to do? Some people stopped out. Very good. Okay. And it gapped down. That's correct. So here is where we come in. All right, and here is where the vulture gap takes place. After a prolonged downtrend, a prolonged downtrend, as we can see here, then you will see a gap. The question becomes, is this a gap that is going to keep on going further down, or is this a gap that is going to reverse the trend? Oh, my goodness. All right, there's a lot of people bleeding right now, okay? But shortly after that, we see this take place, okay? And that is the essence of the vulture gap strategy, all right? So what we'll be talking about is learning how to participate in something like this. All of you guys who got in when, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor up here and we're going long, I mean, you guys are probably, and if you were anything like me, you know, when I first started, by this time I already lost everything I had and I would be the one getting out at the very bottom over here only to come back two, three, four weeks later and see the stock rally right back up to the top again. I was like, dog, gone it. Okay. So if you guys can relate to me, um, you know, that'll be good. Now, somebody asked, what about volume? Okay. Don't even worry about that. It's all about the chart. Okay. Um, to be honest, I don't even use volumes in my, in my charts. Uh, and when, when you, when you see my chart and my setups, volumes is not one of them. Okay. And part of the reason why is because there's so many information on this chart alone that can tell you what you need to see, okay? So small time frame, it doesn't matter. The time frame doesn't matter, okay? The time frame doesn't matter whether it's a daily chart, weekly chart, monthly chart, intraday chart, it doesn't matter. The fact is you're looking at this chart and trying to garner enough information to tell you what you need to do next. All right, very good. Okay, so I'm, I, I appreciate everybody that participated in that exercise. How about now? How many people are saying, okay, I'm out of this stock now, or I'm going to keep on going long? Okay, because like I said, this is what we have to deal with on a real regular basis, okay? So now the stock is way up here. We have to figure out, are we still in or are we getting out? 
for those of you guys who are willing to get out, perfect. All right. And if you notice, after a prolonged downtrend, we have another gap right here. All right. So I hope you guys can start beginning to see what I mean by the vulture gap. We'll go into more details about it. But <clears throat> if you can see, after a prolonged trend, a gap in the same direction of that trend is what we call a vulture gap. Okay. All right. And as you can see, the reversal started taking place. So, all right. Um, Albert Einstein said this. He said, everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And that's kind of how I felt in the beginning, okay? I felt like I was stupid because I was seeing all this stuff that everybody was talking about, but I could not figure out how to put it into good use for myself. And no matter what I tried to use, there was always, you know, something else that, you know, this so-called professional had or this so-called expert had that I did not have, all right? And so at the end of the day, I came to realize that, you know what, it's not that I'm stupid. It's just that I'm traded in an environment that is not conducive to what I am um, um, built for, okay? And so I started doing more research of my own and trying to understand the market um, by the resources that I have. And when I was able to do that, I started realizing that, hey, it's okay to be a fish in a pond. I don't need to climb a tree like the monkey has to climb a tree, okay? So, if you've seen taglines like this, 87% uh, winning trade, these are all the kind of stuff that got my attention when I first lear started learning how to trade. I wanted to be like the pros, but like I said, the biggest thing was I didn't have the resources and the tools that the pros had, all right? And one of the biggest things, like I said, uh, when I met with Solomon, one of the biggest things we both came to agree on was the fact that, you know, when we look at this chart and, you know, you see this 87%, you know, uh, consistent trades and all that stuff, um, you know, when I would watch and, and try to learn, the thing that always happened was they'll say, look at where I got in. If you see where this yellow uh, circle is right here, I say, oh, yeah, see, if you had got in over here, look at how much money you could have made, okay? And you should have got out right at this yellow top right here. Well, going to classes and seeing this type of stuff, it made so much sense. But what I did realize that, wait a second, when it came to me having to go home and doing it myself, I could not trade based on what happened back here. I had to trade based on what was going on, going to take place in the future. So I heard a lot like, oh, yeah, you should have got out of that top right there. Oh, you should have shorted over there. Look at how much money you've made if you got all the way down there. Oh, you know, this bottom part is a perfect bottom to get in. And, you know, look at how much all this would have been. You know, all that was in hindsight, okay? So I hope that that, you know, kind of like paints the picture of, you know, why I'm so adamant about learning to trade on the right side. Um, Here's a comic that I saw out there that, that depicts this perfectly. You know, uh, Brother Janupa, um, you know, he was asked to demonstrate his skills. So he shoots an arrow into a blank space on the fence. And then when it was asked, what are you doing? He says, you know, without any embarrassment whatsoever, he said, it's easy. You see, first you shoot the arrow, then just take your paintbrush and draw a target around it. It works all the time. I hit 90% of the time I make my trades, okay? And I, I just find this so frustrating uh, when I was learning how to trade the market, it's like everything is always in perfect hindsight, okay? So at the end of the day, uh, I'll share this last screen with you and then we're going to like really talking about the vulture gap. You know, I want you guys to realize that, you know what, like, like I said earlier, if you're a fish, you don't have to worry about climbing a tree. But let's call apples apples and let's call oranges oranges, all right? As you look at this presentation, and I urge you with any other presentation you do in the future, okay, if it makes sense to you, then great. If it doesn't make sense to you, don't try to force it making sense to you, okay? Um, an example is, you know, I, I use the story of the emperor's new clothes who was, you know, conned because he was so arrogant. There was these two guys that came and conned him and said that, saying that, hey, you know, we have this magical outfit, and if you put it on, it's invisible to everybody, but if you put it on, it's like you'd be the greatest, okay? And him being arrogant, not wanting to admit that, okay, he's, you know, and instead, like, only uh, uh, fools and ordinary people can see this magical clock, okay? And so him not wanting to um, uh, be, you know, considered a fool or an ordinary person, you know, he played along. You know, okay, yeah, I see it, I see it, even though he really didn't see this clock. But he's like, if I admit that I don't see what these guys are talking about, then I'll look like the foolish person, okay? And so he put on this invisible clothes, quote, unquote, 
and he paraded the whole streets with it. And, you know, all the people around him, he was acting, how does it look? And nobody wanted to act as if they were stupid. So they all said, oh, yeah, it looks good because, of, of course, if the king, you know, sees something magical, then he must be seeing something I don't see, okay? And so for that reason, it's like, well, it must be working because he sees it. So it's just a matter of, you know, I'm just this lowly person that can't understand or see what this guy is doing. So, um, you know, I'm just going to keep on doing, you know, trying and see what he, what he, what he sees. And the fact is, if you don't see it, you don't see it. It wasn't until a four-year-old kid came and said, wait a second, this king is not wearing any clothes. He's naked. That, you know, everybody started saying, huh, well, maybe this four-year-old is correct, okay? So what I'm saying is, when we look at trading, whatever strategy, whatever method anybody teaches you, anybody, including myself, you know, <clears throat> test it, okay? If you see that it works for you, great. If it doesn't, then it doesn't work for you, all right? And please remember that. So... I mentioned volume, um, some of the other indicators that I, I mean, I, del I delved into it. I spent a lot of time, and maybe it's a situation where I don't understand how other people see it, but for me, I could not see how volume could help me, okay? There were times where volume said one thing, and then the next minute was saying another thing. Bollinger Bands, Pivot Points, Fibonacci's, MACD's, I mean, all these different, you know, uh, indicators, you know, it sounded all, I mean, I remember the first time I heard the word Fibonacci. I was like, oh, man. Uh, if I can just even pronounce that, I would sound sophisticated, As, okay? And, and that was my mentality. But at the end of the day, you know, it wasn't working for me. I could not figure out how to use it the right way, okay? Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work. All I'm saying is, for me, I could not figure out how to make it work, okay? And I was this fish trying to climb a tree when, in actuality, I just needed to stay in the pond and, and, and do my thing in the pond, okay? So... Um, I urge you guys to do the same thing. If, if, if at the end of this presentation you don't see how my, my strategy can help you, then, you know, by all means, you don't have to go with it, okay? But if you see that it can help you, then you need to, like, definitely consider it, okay? So I'll leave you with that, and then let's go into the, the meat of today's lesson, the vulture gap. Um, let me uh, check real quick just to see if anybody has any questions. Uh, okay, nobody has questions. That's good. All right. So the vulture gap strategy. So why did we call this the vulture gap strategy? Um, it, it, the reason why, of course, is it, it, it has a lot of characteristics as a, as a vulture has, okay? What's the first thing about a vulture that everybody knows? This? A vulture is ugly, okay? I showed you guys the chart earlier, and we saw how, you know, this, uh, you know, this stock was just plummeting, okay? I mean, that's ugly to a lot of people, all right? Those people who know how to short, that's beautiful, but to a lot of people, that's ugly, all right? So we know that a vulture is ugly. Vultures, they eat what everybody else doesn't want to eat. Um, and so that was one of the reasons why we called it vulture strategy, and I'll go in, into a little bit more details about that. But before that, let me talk about gaps, okay? Because when I was learning about, you know, trading and all that stuff, I learned about gaps. I'm, you know, gaps is nothing new, okay? And by the way, you know, my vulture gap strategy is, you know, pretty much the same thing as an exhaustion gap in a sense. All right, but I just call it vulture gap because it helps me see it for what you know it, it really looks like. But the question was always, well, how do you know, okay, if this is an uh, uh, an exhaustion gap or breakout gap or continuation gap and all that kind of stuff? And once again, everybody that I talked to was always in hindsight they could pinpoint it out. But while you trade in it, nobody could really pinpoint it out to you, okay, or to me. And so for that reason, um, you know, it was one of those things that that um that help me to like go back and say, okay, I need to figure out how to identify this. Now, uh, that being said, a gap, basically for those of you guys who might not know what a gap is, a gap is basically price. If you guys can see my arrow, my cursor right here, um, price is trending down, okay? And then all of a sudden, there's a space in between that candle and the next candle where they never touch each other, okay? Sticks, uh, these black lines right here is called your, your shadows or your sticks or your tails, you know? So from the lowest point of this to the highest point of the next handle, they just don't even touch each other. All right, that's what is called a gap. Now, how does the gap take place? Most of you guys already know this, but, you know, it's overnight trading. So something went on, um, you know, while the market was closed and some investors decided to go in, some institutions decided to go in and start trading that in whatever direction they decided to trade it in, okay? Um, that's pretty much what a gap is. But there are different times when gaps form, all right? Um, so as we can see right here, we have a gap, you know, this very first gap right here coming down. Um, then we have uh, a gap at the bottom when it's going up, all right? 
So this is what they call the breakaway gap, and then you have this gap in the middle, and this is what they call the common gap, okay, or the measuring gap, and then you have the exhaustion gap, which is this right here, which is what we call the vulture gap, okay? So basically, that's just what a gap is. Whenever you have prices that overnight move far away from the lowest low from the day before, and the high of the next day doesn't even come close to where that low was, or in the, in the case of the reverse section, the highest high of the day before doesn't touch the lowest low of the next day, um, that's what a gap is, okay? All right, so um, one of the things that we talk about is like a vulture is very ugly, okay? So um, if we're looking at this stock, it doesn't matter what stock it is, it doesn't matter what time frame, it doesn't matter um, you know, when it took place. The fact is we're looking at this chart, Okay, and if we look looking at this chart, we see this chart on the downtrend. Okay, and anybody who bought on the top right here is probably you're just like, oh my gosh, this is just horrible. Okay, there's so much pain. I mean, for 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 weeks, I mean, just price just plummeting and plummeting and plummeting, and then everybody starts losing faith in the stock, and they start all going different places. Nobody wants to be around it because it's scary and it's ugly. It's just like, oh my gosh, nobody wants to do anything with this stock. Well. Kind of like a vulture, if you see this picture in the middle, uh, it, there's rumors that, you know, when, when an animal is about to die, a vulture is aware of it, okay? Now, how true that is, I don't know, but, you know, um, that's what the rumors are. If that is true, and an animal is about to die, and a vulture is circling around, because we obviously, I've definitely seen vultures circle around, but I've never seen an animal, but it doesn't mean that it's not an animal that is about to die. If that is true that a vulture sees it, then this would make perfect sense, because when everybody is scared and nobody wants to be around this animal that's about to die or an animal that's already dead, you know, um, nobody wants to come near, this is when a vulture, you know, gets excited, okay? And so one of the things I tell people is like, you know, we don't think about what the market is going to do, all right? And the word think, by the way, uh, for any of our students that we have uh, are forbidden words. Uh, these are like curse words or bad words, so to say, uh, that we forbid any of our students to use, uh, and, and think is just one of them. We actually have a series of them. Um, let me think, um, we have think, uh, feel, okay? I, 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 I used to think a lot, and I hear a lot of people say this now, oh, I think the market is gonna do this, or I think it should do this, or I think it's gonna reverse here, I think it's gonna keep on going up. We, we're not allowed to think, okay? Uh, nor are we allowed to feel. All right. Um, you hear a lot of people say the same thing too. I feel that the market is about to do something. I feel that. Oh, I remember when I first started trading. Uh, one of the guys that I was listening to, he said, I mean, "You just have to have a feel for the market." I was like, "What the heck does that mean? You know, what, what does it mean to have a feel?" It's like, "Well, you you just know. You just have a feel for it." And I was like, "You know what? I, I cannot. You know, that's that's not quantitative enough for me. I, I, it's just too too subjective for me to say. You know, you feel feel what? You know, like I don't feel anything." And I, I don't know if you guys do feel something, but I don't feel anything, okay? And so I, I forbid my students from using those words. We don't feel anything. I have students that come in and I'm training them, and they'll say, oh, yeah, I ask them, I say, well, what, do you, what do you see the market doing? It's like, well, I feel it's going to do this. You feel, well, where did you feel it at? What did you touch that made you feel that, okay? And, you know, yes, I'm joking with it, but at the same time, I'm very serious with them. It's like, we don't feel, we don't think, because all this kind of puts our mind in a biased context that makes us look at the market based on our own biased opinion rather than what the information is in front of us, okay? So we don't feel, we don't think. Uh, the next word is we don't hope. All right. I don't hope the market does this. I don't hope the market do this. Now I'm not a. I'm a person of faith, and I'm, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have faith. But you know, when it comes to trading, it's like you know, toss that aside. I, I used to do that too. Um, I was very superstitious. I remember one time when I lost uh, one of my biggest trades, um, about eighteen thousand dollars in one day. And I mean, it was just like I mean, it, it would have been better for the ground to just open up and just swallow me up that day. Okay. And um, you know, I went home just sulking. My wife was consoling me. And um, I started thinking, I said, what went wrong? What went wrong? And I, that's all I could think about. What went wrong? What did I do wrong? And I was like, aha, I figured it out. And what it was was I was wearing, I was wearing a red shirt that day. I said, duh, it makes absolute sense. Because I was wearing red, that's why I lost all this money, okay? I mean, I, this is a true story, all right? But that was the mentality I had. That that's what it is. So because of that, I said, man, I'm wearing red. The market dropped. That's the reason why. So I went home and literally, I kid you not, I took all the clothes I had, my socks, anything that had any hint of red in it. 
I went in my house and cleared everything out, my un even my underwear, underwear, socks, shoes, shirts, anything. You know, I was like, throw them out, throw them out. I do not want to wear anything red because that's why I lost all this money. Okay, looking back in hindsight now, it's like, okay, I laugh at that. All right, but when that was happened, that was real. That was really, really. That's what I really believed. Then I thought it was karma that was coming after me. It's like, oh man. So then I became paranoid, starting going around trying to figure out. Who are the people I need to apologize to? Who did I do wrong? Who did I, you know, it's like mar the market is not about that, okay? That's what happens when you start putting emotions into it rather than just waiting to see what the chart is actually telling you. So we don't use the word think, feel, hope. Uh, we don't wish for the market to do anything. We don't, uh, the other thing is I see a lot of students come to me and say, I heard so-and-so say this. Um, uh -uh, no, okay? We don't hear anything, nor do we listen to anything. The only thing we do is see, okay? So we don't think, we don't feel, we don't hope, we don't wish, we, don't, we didn't hear anything, and we're not listening to anything, all right? The only three things we do is we see what the chart is doing, we know what it's supposed to do, and we expect it to do what we know it's supposed to do. That's it. It's very simple. We see, we know, we expect. That's it, okay? So when I see this, the market is very scary, just like a vulture. It's ugly. Everybody's like, you know, you know, jumping out. You know, it's like the, the the Titanic. Just, you know, everybody's just bailing out of it. Okay, that's fine. We see that this thing is is sinking. Okay, fine. But then we see this vulture gap, and based on that, we know certain things are about to happen. Okay, so now we expect it to do what we know. And if it doesn't do what we know, then we stay away. But if it starts doing what we know it's supposed to do, that's when we start engaging the market. Okay? So um, I hope that, you know, that kind of helps you guys understand. Um, um, gaps during the day, I don't see that too often. Um, I, uh, unless you trade it intraday. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a question box over here. Uh, Jay, you asked um, if gaps, uh, over, gaps overnight. That is correct. How about if it happens during the day? I don't see them happen, you know, too much during the day. Maybe at the open in the morning, okay, um, but even still, that's still an overnight gap in a sense. But I don't, you know, see. And, and, and by the way, I'm a swing trader, guys. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't day trade whatsoever. Um, I'm a swing trader. I hold on to my positions from anywhere between two days to like about the longest is two months, okay, uh, based on the strategy that I'm using at the time. All right. So. All right. So here's an example. This same chart that we were just talking about right here, all right, we, when everybody else was scared about this and everybody was getting out, this is when I get excited because as a vulture, we get excited like, oh, we have food to eat right here. So now I'm just waiting for this animal to die so I can go in and, you know, have my lion's share of the meal, okay? And that's exactly what happened right here, okay? So a few days later, of course, just as I expected it to do, the market started reversing, and in five days, you know, by trading options, we're able to make 257%, okay? Now, we get that very, very often, okay? Um, that's another thing I hear a lot of people say, like anybody that tells you that they make double digit is lying to you and all that kind of stuff, that's not necessarily true, all right? We've done this over and over. Um, you will see even in some of the text messages that I sent to some of our students and stuff like that, they've done it to themselves, okay? Um, the other thing about a vulture, uh, the vulture gap that I like is like it signals the end of a trend. So in the type, it says you know, how to identify the beginning and end of a trend. Well, when I see a vulture gap, chances are very, very high that the end of that trend is near. So a lot of people tell you you can't pick the exact bottom. Well, maybe so. Maybe I cannot pick the exact bottom to the T. But one thing I always tell people is like if a new trend is about to begin with a vulture gap, I will be in it within the first two to five days. Okay, and I'll be able to write a good portion of that trend. All right. So one of the things I like about the vulture gap is the fact that it lets you know that the trend is coming to an end. So you just have to know how to identify it properly and making sure that you're not uh, confusing it with any other types of gaps out there and use that to your advantage. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is Microsoft. Same thing, okay. Microsoft had a vulture gap right there. Um, I, okay, yeah, uh, this is Microsoft actually. So this is the gap that we saw, the vulture gap that we saw, all right. And actually, I think this is a different chart. I apologize about that. 
Uh, I think I have two different charts up here. But anyways, the point is, you see that Microsoft was actually in a downtrend also. Then it gapped down, and then next thing you know, it reversed the trend. Okay. Um, the other thing about um, vultures is that a lot of people, you know, misunderstand and avoid vultures in real life. And it's the same thing, too, with this vulture gap strategy. You know, when people see stocks like this, most people are like, stay away from this stock, stay away from this stock. I remember talking to a lot of my instructors uh, that I had when I first started, and I thought, oh, yeah, you know, what should we do? It's like, just stay away. Stay away from it. You know what I'm saying? Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. You know, and that's the, that's the biggest thing that everybody would tell you, just avoid, avoid, avoid. All right? But my biggest thing is, you know what? When I see a vulture gap, wow, this is not when I want to start avoiding it. This is when I want to start engaging it. I've had people tell me, oh, are you sure you want to buy that stock right now? And I was like, oh, yes, I am ready to buy that stock right now. Okay? Because what you see is things like this. All right? Now, you guys all heard about USO. All right? When oil was tanking and everybody was all over the place about how the oil market was going down. And it tanked. It dropped about 50% or something like that. Well, there was the vulture gap right there to tell you when it was time to get back into this trade, all right, right there, all right. And then I'm not, I'm not even sure where the, where the oil, uh, where oil is uh, priced right now, but that was a pretty decent move that you got out of this, okay. Now, mind you, look at what I said right here. We only were in this trade for six days, okay. We were not in it for all the way up here, all right. Now there are reasons why, you know, we, you know, we have trade management that stopped us out and all that stuff. And we made a decent amount of money. It's like take our money and go. But, you know, I mean, you know, in this case, and it doesn't always work like this, but in this case, I mean, this thing just kept on going, all right? So that's one of the benefits of understanding how to see a vulture gap. The other thing about a vulture is they say, you know, vultures have very strong stomachs, okay? And it, you have to have a very strong stomach in order to, like, you know, try to enter a trade when everybody else is bailing out of it. I mean, these are the types of stocks that everybody on – on the news stations are telling you, oh, yeah, you know, this stock is just tanking, get out, get out, get out. It's, it's the type of stock that just makes everybody else sick, sick, okay? But you have to have a very strong stomach to say, okay, you know, well, everybody's jumping out. I'm actually going to go ahead and jump in, all right? But if you base it on knowledge, and that's the key word, knowledge, knowing what you're looking at and knowing what to expect out of it, then it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't become as bad as most people like it to be. Uh, somebody asked, are you disregarding Wix and, the, and, and recognizing the vulture? No, we do not. Uh, we, we, we actually look at everything. Um, uh, we, we look at Wix as well as the body, okay? Uh, somebody said, uh, would you have bought the first gap down? Um, no, we don't always buy the first gap down. There are things that we look for, and we cover that in the classes that we teach our students uh, when, when, uh, when we look for those gaps. Are you, what are the three things again? Uh, the three things again were see, know, and expect, okay? So we see what the chart is telling us. And based on what it's telling us, we need to know certain things about it. If we don't know anything about it, we don't trade it, okay? So i give you an example. If you were looking at a chart pattern, for those of you guys who might know what a chart pattern is, you know, if you see a triangle pattern, okay, there are certain things that happens with, tri with a tr triangle chart pattern that you need to know, okay? So once you know those things, then the question is, you expect it to do the things that you know that it's supposed to do. And if it doesn't do that, then you don't trade, pure and simple, all right? But if you don't know that you're looking at a triangle, then you shouldn't even be trading it at all because a triangle would do certain things, okay? And different chart patterns would do different things. So knowing what to expect um, is very, very important. Uh, somebody said, I see lots of gaps. Are we looking for a specific gap because some don't look to be the right one? That is correct. Um, some of them don't look like the right one. So, and uh, this is one of the things that, you know, we have to like learn how to distinguish, you know, the good types of uh, uh, stocks that that have real good vulture gaps from those that don't, okay? If a, if a, if a chart has too many gaps in it, um, it might just be best for you to just walk away from it, honestly, okay? And we've done that, all right? We've done that many times, all right? If a chart has too many gaps in it, we walk away from it, all right? What we're looking for are those that are a little bit more consistent that don't have, uh, when I, and when I say consistent, I mean they don't have too many gaps in it, okay? And, and you are able to then use that 
to um, 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 you know when, when that gap occurs, it like it just stands out. I mean, it, it literally just stands out. It's like you know when you're driving down the street, you don't see dead animals on the street all the time, but when you see one, it stands out. Okay, and if you were driving down the street where there's like a bunch of dead animals, you know, what I'm saying on that street, I'm like you probably be thinking, oh wait a second, I need to probably reverse and get the heck out of here. Okay, uh, but it's the same thing too. So if I see too many too many dead animals on the street, too many gaps on the street. I'm just not interested in that stock at all, okay? But if I'm driving down the street where I don't necessarily see too many dead animals, when you spot one, you just obviously know, okay, that's a dead animal right there. And if you're a vulture, a vulture would be like, hmm, it's meal time, okay? All right, let me see if there's any more questions before I go further. Uh, all right, well, thank you guys. Uh, if you have any more questions, by all means, type it in. Okay, so... You have to have a strong gut to be able to get in when everybody else is trying to jump out, okay? And if you do, you get richly rewarded for this. Notice once again, 15 days is all we spent in this trade, okay? Now, let's go back to the exercise that we did in the beginning, all right? And <clears throat> remember, I've shown you guys a few of these profits that we were able to make. The question is, is that something that is good enough for you or not? Okay, um, how long are you willing to hold on to the trade? Okay, would that be something reasonable for you? If you're a day trader, this strategy for as a swing trade might not work for you, but maybe you have to zone in into um, a, a daily time frame and see how you can trade that. Okay, but you know, does this entice you? Does this meet you know? Or your trading criteria or your trading goal or your trading do you feel like this is something that you can do yourself I mean literally I put on a trade and I walk away for like two three four five days you know put some you know trade management in place and literally just forget about it okay and I'm off doing other things either teaching people volunteering to teach other people somewhere else you know hanging out with my kids and just let the trade itself work itself out okay so um, it gone were the days when I was standing at the computer you know, from, you know, nine, nine, uh, 8.30 in the morning to like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, walking home with a headache and then, you know, you know, feeling the fear of having to go back into work the next day because I just lost a big chunk of money the day before, okay? Um, with this strategy, I mean, literally, uh, I might look over something at, at, at night, maybe once every two or three days, okay, and then jump into a trade that has shown me that it's a true vulture gap and you just keep on going, okay? Here's what I mean by like evidence. Um, you know, these are text messages that I send out to my students. Of course, if you see up here, um, this is like a three, you know, three heads of, you know, the head of three, three different people. That means that it's going out to a group of people. I block their names obviously because you know this is private information. But you know, this is kind of like, you know, I mean, you can see the dates, and I urge you guys to go back on those dates. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You know, on April 7th, all right, which is just two months ago. I'll show you the ones that we did uh, last month also. Um, but this is just two months ago, all right? And it's a, here's the stock that won my watch list. Every single one of these, you know, did pretty well, okay? Um, well, actually, I take that back. Some of these are vulture gas. Some of these are other types of trades that, uh, strategies that we use. But in particular, the ones that stood out out of all of them uh, to me were these vulture gaps right here. But every single one of these during that time, same time, um, April 7th, um, if you notice, 7 p.m., that's when I did my scan. Not during the day when the market was running or anything like that. The next morning, I come in, I place my order. Sometimes I place these orders before the market even opens, okay? <clears throat> and then just let it do what it needs to do because I know what to expect, okay? So I don't have to sit down there. I, 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 I've already seen it. It's already proven itself to me that it is a vulture gap. So then now I know what I need to do, and I know what to expect of it. And if it doesn't do what I expect it to do, you know, there's no emotions about holding on and waiting to see, oh, let's wait and see, you know, and hold on and hope that things change around. None of that stuff. Okay, it's we know, we see, we know, and we expect it to do it. And if it doesn't expect it, we know what to do. Okay, all right. So um, EVR, TRO, GM, you know, uh, there was a time where all the airline stocks were all doing a vulture gap. I mean, it was just beautiful. I mean, just, just absolutely beautiful. And this is what I send out as a text message to all, to all my students um, so that they can, you know, see how we trade in real time. Okay, EVR, this is what we saw on the day that we saw EVR, okay? Um, EVR was, you know, did a vulture gap right here. 11 days later, we walked away with 97% profit. We trade options, by the way, okay? Now, I put the stock profit up there just so that, you know, for those of you guys who don't trade options and you wanna trade um, uh, um, stocks, um, that's fine, 
okay? Um, I don't really see too much of this in futures, and so I stepped away from futures as well as the, uh, excuse me, as well as the Forex market, only because those, those markets are like 24-7. So if you got that trades futures and Forex, unfortunately, this might not work so well for you. Um, maybe unless, uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I, I, I just don't see how it will work um, for futures and Forex. Uh, per se, but if you were trading options, uh, this is probably one of the best strategies um, that you can possibly um, use in your arsenal of tools to trade with. Okay, um, so yeah, um, and the other reason why I like trading options and stocks rather than uh, futures and, and and forex is because of the vast amount of um, stocks that are out there, and so you know I can run scans and find trades, you know, um, anytime I really want to. Um, do I take every trade that I see? No. Okay. Uh, some of them I miss just because of other things that I had going on. All right, I'm a I'm a true, um, you know, regular person, and it's just you know me and my staff from Solomon and two other guys, and that's pretty much it. So you know, but we're not sitting there from nine to five every day. Okay, uh, we do other stuff, and so you know, sometimes we miss it. You know, I might have been playing with my kids by the time I finally saw something, and then it's like it's already too late. I can't get into that trade anymore. All right, TRO. We talked about TRO. This was the vulture gap that TRO did. And the reversal on that, all right, these are trades that we actually took, by the way, all right? Uh, everything I'll show you guys here is actual trades that we ourselves took, okay? Uh, seven days later, walked away with 60% profit, okay? GM was on that list. This is the this is the vulture gap that GM made, and, you know, we traded this uh, in 10 days, may have walked away with a 34% profit. Uh, AAL, all right? Um, we did the same thing, too, with AAL. Um, and um, AAL is the American Airline. Um, <clears throat> they uh, they did that, and of course, um, like I said, the uh, the whole um, air, airline industry was uh, just you know doing great things during that time. They were all, I mean, literally, all of them were like right, like you could like go to any one of these charts, and it looked exactly the same. And um, you know, we kind of did that. Uh, let me uh, let me do something real quick. Uh, because I know I've been going for a while. Let me see if there's any questions out here. One second, guys. Uh, let's see. Do you use simple calls or puts to trade options? Yes, yes. And I'm glad that you asked that question because um, going back to what I was talking about as far as, like, you know, being that fish trying to climb the tree, um, I was very, you know, intrigued by the whole iron condo concept. It's like, oh, you can make money, you know, regardless of which way the market is going to go. But in reality, for me, what I realized is that, you know what, you still have to get, get, have a good idea of, what, of where the market can go and where it cannot go. Okay, so at the end of the day, you still needed to know what direction the market was going to go. So um, that being said, if, if, if you still have to end up learning where the market is going to go, um, Yes, there are times where, you know, uh, other strategies were good for me, and, uh, but what I came to realize was that I, I could make more money if I did strategies like this one, the vulture gaps, than if I did strategies um, that other people were using, which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down, uh, down in any strategy whatsoever, guys. I, please keep that in mind, all right? I think every strategy, there's, there's, there's always a, a time and place for everything, all right? Um, but for me... Simple calls and simple puts were the best, okay? Um, I'm in this trades. I mean, I've had people say, oh, well, what about volatility and what about time and all this stuff? It's like there's ways that we overcome all that by, by, by trading the options the right way, okay? But the cool thing about this is we make more money, you know, buying just simple calls and simple puts that you don't get for if you were to, like, do other types of strategies. And for that reason, we won't do anything else, you know. Um, actually, when I first met Solomon, you know, Solomon was the guy that, you know, he sold puts a lot. When I first met him, I said, Solomon, why are you selling all these puts? I was like, first of all, it costs you a lot of money to sell all these puts, and then you're not making as much money as I'm making, you know. And he was like, oh, no, 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 this is the way you're supposed to do it. And I was like, uh, if, you, if you always sell, you always make money. I said, yeah, that's good, but if you see what the market is telling you to do and you know what to expect, then it's like, hey, you, you can make way more money. Oh, no, 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 you have to sell, you have to sell, Wally. I said, like, okay. So after time, time after time, we actually had a, uh, we had a trading competition. And, you know, during that time, I started revealing a lot more of my, my trades to him. And he started seeing that. And he's like, wow, you know, your strategy really works. I said, Solomon, this thing works all the time. It's like, I'm telling you, it works. You know, and then slowly but surely, Solomon got away from selling puts all the time to, you know, now he's, you know, um, doing a whole lot more. Um, uh, calls 
uh, buying calls and buying puts, you know, pure naked calls, pure naked puts. Uh, for those of you guys who don't understand all this stuff that I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Uh, you'll learn that as you go uh, further in the future. But, you know, um, and the other thing, too, was Solomon was a guy who was like, well, I have to day trade, you know. He would not hold a position overnight. And I said, Solomon, why? I said, why don't you hold this? And it's like, man, this, the trend is reversing. At least for another week, this thing can keep on going up, and you can make a whole lot more money. Right? And they have it come in. What if it gaps overnight, and you can make even more money? He's like, well, what if it gaps the other way? I said, okay, yeah, but when I see what I see and I know what it's supposed to do, it's like this thing has been right more than it's been wrong, and you can make way more money that way. Lo and behold, you know, I mean, for a while, it took a while, you know, and I wasn't even trying to convince him. I was just showing him what I do, and he was seeing it for himself. And, you know, just I think last month or two months ago, you know, Solomon finally started holding trades overnight. And I was like, yes, you know. And then he came to me the other day, and he said, oh, you know, I'm holding my trade over the weekend. I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He said, man, this thing, I see it. I see it's going to go up. And I was like, man, that is awesome. You know, it's like I felt good. Like I felt like I converted him, you know. Um, but it's just exciting to see that, you know, and it's like, man, that's one of the coolest things about this whole thing. It's like even seeing someone like Solomon who was very, very, very well experienced see the potential of this and say, you know what, yes, I'm, yes I still have some trades that I do, my, my, I, I sell my puts, but, you know, he's, he's digging more and more into this whole just buying simple calls, simple puts, and making way more money than he was making before. Um, somebody mentioned over here, I don't imagine that you can – get a lot of gaps with futures. That's correct. I talked about that earlier. Unfortunately, futures and Forex, that's not going to help you. Um, in trading options, what stop loss do you use? Okay. Um, we use different types of stuff, all right? Um, it could be, you know, um, time that we, you know, we have a way that we use time because we expect certain things to happen within a certain period of time. If it doesn't happen, we get out. Uh, we use um, stop losses as far as like, um, you know, how much percentage um, our trading plan allows us to lose per, per certain trade, okay? Um, so we've done that also. Um, and then we just, you know, also look at uh, the chart itself. Uh, if it's not doing what it's supposed to do, regardless of what our plan was, you know, we get out. Um, um, since I've been using this vulture trade, uh, to be honest with you guys, I've only had one loss. And I am not exaggerating I, uh, and, and not making this up. I have only had one loss, which is last week on the trade, okay, uh, using this vulture gap. And I remember when, when, I, when you know, I, saw, I saw the vulture gap, I knew what it was supposed to do, and I expected it to do it, okay. It started doing it, but then it changed its mind. And I remember telling Solomon, I said, wait a second. I said, you know what? I had a stop loss of a certain percentage, and I said, okay, if I lose more than X amount of dollars, then I'm out of this trade. So I had not lost that amount, but the chart was showing me that it was not doing what it's supposed to do. And so I remember I was literally on the phone with Solomon. I said, yeah. I said you know, I'm, I'm torn. Should I go with what I see or should I go with the fact that I have a certain amount and my stop loss has not been triggered yet? He's, and he was like, go with what you see. You know, that's what you keep on talking about. And so even for me, as much as I talk about it, you know, the emotions are so strong. And I'm like, oh, well, I still have the stop loss and my stop loss has not been triggered yet. But I'm looking at this chart and the chart is saying, no, it's not going in the right direction. You know, so I'm glad that I had Solomon to, you know, just kind of like in that moment of vulnerability, be able to talk some sense into my head and say, go be what you see. Once I did that, you know, I got out and I'm glad that I did because the next day this thing just kept on tanking and tanking. I was like, phew, once again, this is the reason why you should know uh, and, and trade based on what you see. Um, somebody said, fantastic, thank you very much. Do you look at candlesticks formation doing a gap down and where support is in relation to the trend? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And we talk more about that in, in the workshop that we do. But yes, candlestick plays a humongous part of this strategy, okay? Um, <clears throat> and um, yes, um, chart patterns uh, also play a humongous part of this. Absolutely, and we teach all that at the workshops that we that we do. Um, I'm still not clear on how to distinguish the vulture gap, which is a true reversal point from the others, which have no meaning. Okay, all right. So the reason why is because you don't have enough information yet. All right, and part of the reason why you don't have enough information is because part of it is things that I'm withholding until you know you actually take a class. To be fair, for those who are actually going to be paying for it, but. Um, somebody just mentioned, you know, being able to tell this, this, you have to wait for certain information. Part of that information is candlestick, but it's not the only thing. Part of that information is seeing whether or not you are in a support or resistance area, okay, but it's not the only thing, all right? Um, we have about 11 different things that we look at 
um, that we use to kind of determine whether or not it's truly the end or it's not the end, okay? So uh, that's about as much as I can reveal as far as that. I understand that you might not, the concept is once you understand, when, when you learn how to identify true vulture gap, okay, you will see these trends reverse. Um, somebody said, I am unemployed. How much does the program cost? I will talk about that towards the end, so just hold on uh, and answer that question too. At the money or in the money? It depends. Um, we do all kinds of stuff. Some we do way out of the money, depending on what we see. Some we do um, in the money, uh, depending on what we see also. Okay. Uh, but the most part, if everything, um, all things being equal, um, at the money is what we'll probably go for. Okay. But uh, there's times where we just know that, you know, based on what the information that we see, we just know that, okay, this thing is going to take a huge run to the reversal side. So we start loading up on that and, 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 and we have a way of determining how far it's going to go and what we'll do with that. Do you use stop losses on your option trades? Absolutely, we use stop losses. We will not trade without stop losses. I know some people say you should not trade. Uh, that uh, they, I've heard some people say you know stop losses are for people who don't know what they're doing. Uh, that's not absolutely true. Um, we expect things. Yeah. The reason why I like stop losses is the fact that it allows me to uh, to be able to walk away from the trade and just go do other things and just know that the computer is doing everything that I needed to do. Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we talked about at the money and all that stuff. Okay. So, um, so let me go on. Thank you guys so much for all those questions. Uh, let me go on with this. So AAL, as I said, uh, 13 days later we were up 68%. Uh, DAL, um, we had DAL, uh, which is another airline stock. You know, 13 days later we were up 129%. Uh, uh, Southwest Airline, LUV, same thing, 13 days later, we were up. notice that all of them were 13 days later uh, because like I said, they were literally all doing the same exact thing, you know, 34%, ALK, Alaska Air, same thing, uh, 14 days later, we were up 68%, okay? So here are the trades that we did from uh, last month, and if I have enough time after, after um, everything, I'll actually show you the charts of this, but uh, once again, <clears throat> these are real trades that I sent text, text out to vulture trades that we did on May 7th. You can go look at those charts and see how they actually turned out. Mind you, all this stuff was sent out before it happened, not in hindsight. This was all before um, uh, the market was actually going to do something uh, the next day. So um, you can use that and use that as a testament to seeing that what we talk about is actually true. So. I hope you guys learned something and hope hope that this actually really would help you um, in your trading. Uh, what I want to do is let you guys know about the workshop that we do offer where we actually teach us in more details. Um, some of the questions that you guys have that I, I didn't have the liberty of sharing on this we'll be able to share at the workshop. Okay, um, Our workshop typically goes for uh, $997 and we have one coming up the end of this month on May 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., okay? Uh, what we will be talking about in these workshops would be how to manage your trade by getting set, okay? So the, the set is an acronym for, you know, setting your stops, your t entries, and your targets. You will see how to do this very easy, very simple. Um, you know, it will blow your mind, okay, th is this all there is to it? But um, the biggest thing is making sure that you then become able to be disciplined enough to, to, uh, to follow the rules that you set for yourself. Um, in addition to that, we'll be talking about adding reversal locations. So we talked about support and resistance. That's one of them. We'll be adding some more uh, reversal locations that allows you to see whether it's truly a, a vulture gap or not, okay? Um, <clears throat> playing the vulture gap to the upside. Most of the examples I showed you guys today were vulture gaps to the downside, okay? So, you know, how about when the market is trending upward and, the, and, the, and that trend is about to end or the stock is trending upward and is about to end and start plummeting back down? I mean, you've seen stocks like, you know, Twitter and GoPro and Alibaba, you know, all these stocks were like stocks that everybody was all excited about when they came out with their IPOs and was going up and up and up and up. But then it hit a top and it started reversing from there, okay? Um, using Vulture Gas can allow you to pick some of these types of stocks uh, when it gets to that top and start heading back down again, okay? Uh, we'll talk about indicators. Now, I told you that, you know, I don't use volume, nor do I use bulletin bands, but there are indicators that I do use and we'll talk about 
some of those indicators that, once again, it just helps you with your accuracy of saying, okay, is this truly a vulture gap or not, okay? Uh, magnifying profits with options. Uh, some of you guys ask me about options. We trade options uh, predominantly. I mean, very rarely would I trade um, uh, stocks, okay? Um, but if I trade stock, it's probably because the stock is uh, so low or maybe the trade just looks too good to pass up and the options are not the best on it. So knowing how to identify, you know, which options are, are good, which options are bad, all that kind of stuff, um, we'll touch on that. Um, when is the best time to find them, okay? Learning how to scan for them, learning how to look for them, where to go to find them and all that stuff. We'll be talking about that too at this workshop. Uh, we'll give you tons of examples, good ones and bad ones, okay? Um, so that by the time you're done, um, like that guy, that, uh, the person that asked the question is like, um, you know, how do I know if this is vulture gap? All that will be cleared up. I mean, it, it won't be a shadow of a doubt like, okay, this is a vulture gap, this is not a vulture gap, okay? And then we analyze real trades for the coming week, okay? And so um, <clears throat> with my previous students that we have before and with you guys now coming on board also, what we'll do is like we'll look at all these trades. We do encourage people to send in trades, you know, that they want us to look at also. So we can, you know, we'll sit down there, we examine all these and, you know, use all these methods that we talk about in these classes to determine whether or not um, we have um, a true vulture gap, whether we should be playing this vulture gap or not, okay? So that is the, um, uh, the workshop. Uh, for those of you guys who sign up today and today only, okay, um, <clears throat> actually, let me take the back. Anybody that signs up before the workshop, we will give you these bonuses, okay, just for signing up for the workshop. The Alphabet of Trading ebook that I wrote, okay, and this is from my own real life experience. Um, it's not any, you know, I mean, I mean, this is just me in the trenches, the lessons that I learned, you know, I put stories, real life stories that took place on how I learned how to trade, okay, and, um, you know, I talk about the alphabet of trading. The reason why I call it the alphabet of trading is because learning how to read a chart is like learning how to read the alphabets, okay? Um, if you were to go to Russia, you would learn, you would need to learn how to speak Russian, okay? But you need to know the alphabets of Russian in order, to, in order to learn how to read it. And so, and trading is the same way too. Unfortunately, some people don't know how to read it. Some people disregard it altogether. Um, but, you know, um, I think you will find this book very, very interesting because um, it is my journey on how I learned how to understand and, um, and, uh, uh, and read the charts very well, okay? Then we'll be talking about, uh, I'll give you another bonus, which is uh, audio tape of, uh, that, I, that I did called the 15 Amazing Stock Market Strategies, okay? And uh, these are all different stock market strategies that we have discovered, uh, Solomon and myself, um, that we use um, in our trading, okay? Uh, we use some more than others, uh, I won't lie to you, uh, because we, those, some happen more frequently than others, but we'll talk about that, okay? Um, we'll also talk about uh, market direction, how to determine whether the market is going up, whether it's going down, when it's beginning to go up, when it's beginning to go down, that kind of stuff, you know, because all that stuff is important. I, I, I don't like doing stuff in hindsight, you know, let's, let's figure out what it's going to do in the future. Then we talk about market tools, and this is where we talk about how we discovered some of the tools that we use and um, how we apply some of the tools that we use to trade it. So for all of you guys who actually sign up uh, before the workshop, you will actually get this um, bonuses uh, in addition to the workshop. Um, but for those of you guys who sign up today, and today only, okay, so by... 11.59 p.m. tonight, if you sign up, you will get these additional bonuses. And what it is is uh, the 15 Amazing Stock Market Strategies Part 2. So in Part 1, we talk about 8 out of the 15. In Part 2, we talk about the next, uh, the remaining 7 uh, that we have. Then you'll get also a video about my real-life trading mistakes that I made and how you can avoid them. And I'm telling you, if you can learn to avoid some of these mistakes that I made, um, it would make you sleep better at night and possibly even allow you to make more money, okay? And then also um, our favorite trading strategy for consistent monthly income. So if you like the Vulture Gap strategy, wait till you hear about the other strategy that we have that is uh, more consistent for monthly income. So somebody asked about, um, you know, being unemployed and all that stuff. Once you learn how to use this favorite strategy of ours, I mean, literally, you can cash in checks every two to six weeks. Um, literally every two to six weeks, and we still use that strategy till today, okay? 
All right. So we said it's nine, $997, uh, but Dan had asked me to, like, you know, give you guys uh, a special. So what I am willing to do for you guys today and today only is if you sign up for this workshop for just the people on this webinar, everybody else outside of this webinar are going to get for different prices, I will give it to you guys for $297. What this does and what it will do is it will give you membership for three months, okay, to um, all our workshops that we have. So we'll be, we have one workshop a month that's specific about the Vulture Gap. So it would allow you to have that for the next three months where you can actually see us doing that. Not only that, it would also give you, uh, you will see the trades that we put on in real time. So as we place the trades, we send out an email, we send out a text message to all our uh, students, and you'll be able to get that for the next three months if you sign up um, for, for this, okay? Um, if you go to our website, let me see right here, um, you will see on our website where you can actually sign up for it. Uh, like I said, it's June 27th right there. Uh, this is a three-month membership. That's the uh, 296. Uh, 297, sorry. Um, if you see right here, I said 147 uh, for monthly membership. That is, you know, if you don't have the 297 and you still want to come on board, you can sign up for the uh, uh, $147 per month, and you'll be able to at least uh, attend the workshop that we have um, for for this upcoming month, for the month of June. All right, and that also entitles you to receive uh, the bonuses that uh, we are going to be giving out as well. Okay. So sign up right there where you see that arrow. Just go to our website, rightsidetrading.com. Sign up right there, and you'll be able to see where you can sign up. Um, I will also give you additional gifts, which is, like I said, the weekly market review. Um, this is something we send out to our students uh, that are members of our company. Um, we send out weekly market reviews, so you get to see how we see the market and use that as a way to, like, gauge whether you are looking at the market correctly yourself, okay? Uh, for the most part, we're, you know, on point with what we see in the market, and that allows us to, like, take advantage of what's happening when we see these vulture gaps so much more better, um, as well as, like I said, um, emails of the live trades that we take personally, and we'll also give you a free trading plan consultation, okay? Um, it's up to you to choose it if you want, but Solomon or myself, you know, um, if you want, you just email us um, after you sign up, and we'll give you a call, we'll sit down with you and come up with a plan that helps you uh, put this vulture strategy into uh, good use for you. Let me see if you guys have any questions uh, right now. Let's see. Uh, 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 let's see here. says, do you have a strategy that handles a stock that has gapped through your stop loss? No, we don't have a strategy that handles that, okay? Um, uh, that would be good if we could do that, but unfortunately, because it's overnight, uh, we don't have anything. If you do, please let us know, because um, I'm always open to seeing how we can always improve. But as of right now, no, we do not have any strategy that can handle um, gaps that goes through our stops. And usually that's because it gapped the night before, okay? So I'll give you an example. One great way to avoid that is avoiding stocks that have a lot of gaps, okay? Uh, that's one of the reasons why we avoid it. And I'll show you that when we come to the workshop, why we avoid those. Because, you know, if they gap the next day you, in, against you, there's just nothing you can do about it. So that's why we don't like seeing too many dead animals on the road. We just want to see one at a time and say, oh, that's, that's, that's a good meal right there. Okay. Would you mind sharing what criteria you use to scan for the vulture gaps? Uh, we talk about that in the uh, vulture gaps uh, in the in the workshop, but um, you know I'll give you you know real quickly. Honestly, um, part of it is um, just going to finviz.com and we do some searches on finviz. Uh, we find some, and then the others uh, I share that only with people who actually are members of our school um, with the uh, software that that we actually use to scan them. Okay. Uh, would you want to run a spell? You may want to run a spell check on this slide. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm not sure what slide you're talking about, but I would definitely look into doing that. What do you use for platform and scanner? Uh, we actually trade uh, with uh, ThinkOrSwim. Okay, predominantly uh, ThinkOrSwim, but we also have Option Express. Uh, we also have. Uh, um, uh, I think Solomon uses Fidelity, um, uh, and I think that's pretty much it for now, and um, maybe TC2000 also. 
Okay. Would you take ninety seven dollars? <laughs> It'd be um <clears throat> no, um not not right now. We you know, if, uh we actually used to offer it for ninety seven dollars, but we realized that this is worth more than that, so uh, unfortunately um that's not the case. But um yeah, unfortunately no. Uh, would you like to? Uh, I would like to sign up, but need to know if you have the right scanners and platform. We do. Um, trust me, we do. If I don't show you, I will refund your money back. How about that, Jeff? Okay. If I don't show you the right scanners, I will refund your money back. But yes, we do. Okay. Do you put the stop loss on the options? Yes, we do. How do you? How good is this for applying to binary options? That I do not know. Okay. Uh, binary options, I don't know. I've never traded binary options. The first slide, the word special is misspelled. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Dennis. I will go ahead and look at that. Um, thank you. All right, so let me just leave you guys with this. This is actually a student of mine, okay? And this student, um, <clears throat> I blocked out the name of this company right here because when he came to me, uh, this guy literally would, um, his method of uh, investing in the stock market was, uh, he was an Asian guy. Um, nothing against Asians or anything like that, so please don't take that the wrong way. I'm just kind of like telling you the story. Um, so he's an Asian guy, uh, doesn't speak English that well, but his uncle used to trade the stock market. And so he started getting mentored by his uncle. And so his uncle would literally, this is how they, this is how they found the stocks that they traded. They would go to any company that has traded publicly that they wanted to trade. And his uncle's way of investigating and determining whether or not they should trade that stock is to fly out to the company's headquarters. So I just use this as a as an example, this is not the exact headquarters they went to, but they would go to any company. So if it's McDonald's, they'll fly out to me, you know, where McDonald's headquarters is. If it's Walmart, they'll fly out to uh, Benton, Arkansas, and go look at the headquarters. And this is what they did when they got to the headquarters. They got to the headquarters and they looked in the parking lot. And if they saw cars, I, I kid you, this is a true story. If they saw cars in the parking lot of that headquarters that was packed like this, then to them, that was a good company, and that's what they would do. They would then go buy that company based simply on the fact that the headquarters had this many cars in front of it. I kid you not. And he thought his uncle was a genius because his uncle took out the time to actually fly out to the company and see whether this company was legit or not. Okay? So long story short, of course, they lost uh, pretty much all the money they invested in the market and until he saw me speak one day, uh, he came um, he started talking to me. I started showing him how to trade. And this is kind of like what he, this is a text message back and forth, okay, that he sent to me. He made 92% on eBay. Very good. You know, um, I asked him, you know, how many contacts did he sell? He said he bought 10 contracts and sold it, made $900, $910 in one day, okay. Then he went back and he bought this company called Cox, okay. Um, Here's another text from the same guy, and I'm going to use the same guy over and over because I want you guys to see that this is not one of those things where I have many different students giving me one example each of one time that it worked for them. Okay, This is one student, and it could be you too, that came back over and over and over trading the same types of trade over and over and over and making money. Okay, um, So this is a continuation of that same uh, text right here. I said, wonderful. He said he sold all his stock today. Tomorrow uh, will down my profits for today, 16, you know, basically he made $1,600 um, for all the stocks that he had traded. And so I told him, great work, okay? He came back again and told me, to Merry Christmas to you, buddy. Last week I made more than $5,000, all right, uh, using these strategies, okay? And um, that was a good Christmas, you know, uh, text message that he sent me. Uh, came back again and says um, he made $3,000, all right? Um, just like the next month after that, okay? And then came back again, and he said, hi, buddy, I'm so lucky to meet you. This is God sent to me. Blessings for God. Thank you, both of you. And the reason why he was saying this is because, like, he was just making money trading. It's like he could not believe how easy this strategy was, okay? And so this is another text message he sent me saying that he made 65000 So I share that with you guys because I want you guys to realize that, you know, this is something that can be done. Um, this is a guy that did not know how to trade whatsoever, um, and or his trading strategy just absolutely was uh, unbelievable. But he came here and he did this, all right? So I'm going to leave you guys with that because, like I said, um, I, I know I'm running out of time. But for 297 you guys, um, I hope that you guys can uh, uh, see that as uh, something that is valuable. Tra you know, I mean, even the trades that we just did this month alone, I, I don't have enough time to show you those trades. 
you know, you would have made your 297 over within the first week, you know, if you traded those trades that we traded, okay? So I want to say thank you so much for everybody listening. Um, I know I'm running out of time. I don't have any more time for questions. Um, I just answered this real quick. Um, what is the average performance uh, in terms of percentage? Um, the average is anywhere, the minimum has been like 5% and that's because we waited too long, we got out of it, but the average has been anywhere between 60 to like 90% uh, per trade, 60 to 90%. Uh, will we get any materials, i.e. bonus items before the workshop? Yes, you'll get all that stuff before the workshop. So if you sign up today, um, I would actually, you know, start sending those stuff out uh, later on today. Um, you'll start getting, uh, once, once the payments have been cleared through uh, the payment um, um, uh, system, that you you know that you've actually paid, you would definitely get an email from us, and then you start getting the bonuses right then and there. Okay, so I want to say, guys, thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can email us at uh, info at rightsidetrading.com. So you see this right side trading right here. Just put info i n f o at rightsidetrading.com, and we'll you know we'll we'll definitely answer any questions that you have. Okay, uh, I want to turn it back over to Dan. Dan, thank thank you so much for letting me be on your show.